Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Town of Brookfield uh, Select Board meeting for February 2nd, 2023. Please rise to say pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, we're going to... Can I get a motion to take stuff out of order? Motion to take things out of order. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we're going to start with um, what is on your agenda as uh, number three, uh, the vote on the bond issue. And uh, did you have anything you wanted to say specifically? Okay. No, nope, just you got to make all of those motions. All right. So, uh, would one of you go ahead and make uh, start the process of making the motions required for um, the uh, general obligation bond? Sure. I'll make a motion. The first one is to I move that the sale of the one million one hundred and seventy seven thousand ninety dollar general obligation municipal purpose loan of 2023 bonds of the town dated February 22nd 2023 to key government finance Inc at the price of one million two hundred and fourteen thousand eight hundred ninety eight dollars and thirteen cents with its accrued interest if any is hereby approved and confirmed Do I have a second second all in favor Aye. 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 Second motion. I move that the board acknowledge and accept that the bonds shall bear interest semi-annually on February 15th and August 15th and each year until maturity or redemption prior to maturity commencing August 15th, 2023, and that the bonds shall be payable on, a February, on February 15th of the year and in the principal amount and bear interest at the rate as stated below. Uh, do I have to go through the? Okay. And that's uh, you do have to read. I think year. The year the amount and the rate. The year the amount and the rate. Same thing on the next one too. No, the next one you can eat well, when we get there. Okay. <laughs> Twenty. Uh, as stated below, year 2038, $1,177,090 at an interest rate of 4.736%. Ninety dollars. Ninety dollars. What did I say? Ninety dollars. We have a second. Second. Sorry. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 So on this next one, you can say as stated below and not read all of them because this is going to be part of the permanent record. Okay. Um, and that would save us <laughs> Should have noticed the other two pages before I agreed to this. <laughs> <laughs> I move that the board acknowledge and accept that the bonds maturing on February 15, 2038 shall be subject to mandatory redemption or mature as listed below. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You can take turns with Tom. You don't have to I'll get them all. <laughs> Uh, I move that the board acknowledge and accept that the bonds shall be subject to redemption at the option of the town in whole and not in part at any time on and after February 23rd, 2025. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move that the board acknowledge and accept that by establishing the interest rate on the bonds at 4.736% as approved above, the town acknowledges that it has accepted the interest rate lock with premium as that term is defined in the term sheet presented to the town by Key Government Finance Inc. dated January 26, 2023, the term sheet. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move that the board acknowledge and accept that in the event of a default by the town in the payment of principal of or interest on the bonds or if a determination shall have been made by any appropriate federal authority that the interest on bonds of the type and character of the bonds shall be included in the gross income for federal income taxation purposes, then from and after the date of any such event, the interest rate on the bonds shall be increased to the default rate of the taxable rate as the case may be as those terms are defined in the term sheet. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move that we authorize and direct the town treasurer to establish post issuance federal tax compliance procedures and continuing disclosure procedures in such forms as the town treasurer and bond council deem sufficient. Or if such procedures are currently in place to review and update said procedures in order to monitor and maintain the tax exempt status of the bonds and to comply with relevant securities laws. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move that the board acknowledges and accept that any certificates or documents relating to the bonds collectively documents may be executed in several counterparts, each of which shall be regarded as an original and all of which shall constitute one and the same document. Delivery of an executed counterpart of a signature page to a document by electronic mail in a PDF file or by other electronic transmission shall be as effective as delivery of a manually executed counterpart signature page to such document. And electronic signatures on any of the documents shall be deemed original signatures for the purpose of the documents and all matters relating thereto having the same legal effect as original signatures. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Last one. I move that each member of the select board, the town clerk, and the town treasurer be and hereby are authorized to take any and all such action and execute and deliver such certificates, receipts, or other documents as may be determined by them or any of them to be necessary or convenient to carry into effective effect the provisions of the foregoing votes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, madam. Thank you. We just need uh, Brad to sign this thing as the clerk. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. No, no insult or slight intended in either direction. Um, saying that you did all these votes and it was done at an open meeting. Oops, sorry. So I'm going to return to the top of the agenda with the announcements in particular. Um, uh, some of these are very important with regards to um, actions that we'll be taking in the future. So the first announcement is that Brookfield is pursuing a grant through the Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development Block Grant Program, CDBG. The application will seek funds for improvements to Kimball Street located in Brookfield Center. Local officials in consultation with regional planners and engineers have determined the street to be in poor condition. Area residents who have received surveys are encouraged to complete and return them. Residents can also hear about the planned improvements funded through the FY21 CDBG program. Meetings will be will occur in the banquet room at the Town Hall, 6 Central Street, as fol follows. Tuesday, February 14th, 4.30 p.m., meeting with the Brookfield Community Development Group. Thursday, February 16th, 7 p.m., uh, and then FY2223 CDBG application public hearing. There will be a public meeting to discuss the town's master plan at 6.30 Wednesday, February 15th in the banquet room at the town hall. Busy week? Very busy week. Right. So um, we're not doing it as a joint meeting. Did we have anything to report relative to the budget cycle? So one of the things that there was a question about, um, based on this, I wrote this down on the note to myself. We can, uh, one of the things that's missing is the these determiners mail and warrant to registered voters. Um, I have that as on May 18th. Okay. Uh, 
the budget hearing will be the following week. The budget presentation will be the following week. Okay. I still have to clear that with the school, so that's still, you know, like not what day? Stone, yeah. Um, Friday. If I can get the school for that day. Now, what is, how are we doing with regards to getting budgets back? So we have all but, um, I think, I have, I don't have the Board of Health budget, but they're working on it. I uh, don't have the Police Department budget because there was a lot of activity in the PD, and so I gave him an extension because of the search that they were involved in. Right. It been as, you know, budget wasn't a priority right. at that time. So they had uh, a pass. And then I'm pretty sure everything else is in. I got the debt schedule from Amy once we got this paperwork back, which I have to then share with everyone. I haven't passed it along yet. And I just okay. plugged that in today. So, so and, and have we passed along what budgets we've received to... As I got right? them, I sent them to uh, the advisory committee. When they came in, right. I didn't even open them. I just forwarded the email directly to them so they okay. saw exactly what I saw. Okay, great. And, and I also sent them the budget that had everything entered in it so that they could see what I... What you have so far? Yes. Okay. Okay. I beg to... Uh, there's a little bit of a difference as we reviewed that I followed 15... But I think we have a lot of ones like the animal control service. The whole select the general government stuff. We haven't seen the town hall stuff. We haven't seen I got that one. When did I get that? Um, January 31st, after four. So it was. Yeah. So, so I got it yesterday because it was after I left, the day before yesterday. From my standpoint, tell you what we have. There's, there's, there's a little bit of it, but we're, we're fine. But I'm just saying, we have about a third, whatever. We're still waiting on a bunch of so I'm sure we'll get them in the next few days. I, I, other than, other than the budget. selectmen's budgets and the and debt PD. budget, the yeah. PD, I don't have the PD, I don't have board health, but right. I just got the selectmen's budget. Second. I got it yesterday. So. Day before yesterday. Yeah. No, I got it yesterday. Oh, okay. It came in oh, yeah, yeah. I left. Oh, I got, got it. it okay. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no so. problem because if, if you don't get it, you're calling. We'll, we'll call also, like, you know, the, forget the, all the people's names and, like, the respects and people like that. They say all the related to the same thing. So, I'm, I'm not going to make it. paper copies that some of the non-tech savvy people wrote them. Um, one, one person called me, like the, like Carol Plum. She sent an email that didn't actually have the spreadsheet, so I filled it in, but I forwarded you her email. Right, no, the council on age, they have to, to redo out of the Excel spreadsheet, I guess, but there's, there's, there's a lot of them, so I, I'm just trying to I'm sure the select can understand the, the council agent did the theirs in the spreadsheet. What's that? The council agent did theirs in the spreadsheet. That was sent to you. I needed the Excel spreadsheet. I got a scan or something, and then there was a Medicare that was in a different line or something, so you said you were going to clean it up and send it at some point. I, well, okay. All, all I'm trying to say is that I think. Okay, so okay. would you do me? Okay, so you think we're you think you're doing okay? You seem to think you have fewer than what Kelly thinks that you have. So why don't we do this? Can what order should we do it? Should should you send back over just the aggregated spreadsheet, or do you I want to just? Already got the aggregated. Spreadsheet. You've already got the aggregated the one spreadsheet. I sent that you to you guys yep. yesterday. Yeah. It's the same one that they got. Okay. So they have the aggregated ones, they don't, the individual ones. So some people don't have Excel and they yeah. can't do it in Excel. Okay, so, 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 so if you've got so the aggregated one, then my thought would be, and did it high, and I, I didn't open that email, I, I apologize. Okay. Um, 
did it annotate which ones you like the PD and the Board of Health that was still getting that you were still waiting yeah. on or they're blank? It says in the in the columns next to it what and and I sent out a caveat today that I got all of this stuff. I'm supposed to have two weeks to compile it. Right. I put it on the spreadsheet as you and, got it and sent it. But there are imperfections in the spreadsheet because I haven't worked on it. I just yeah. I've just been entering data, so I'm just saying. So, have you looked at the aggregated spreadsheet yet that was sent? Kayla yesterday? has that. Okay, great. Until today, she's supposed to report to us stuff on the next meeting. Okay, great. Um, so, I'm, I'm fine. I think we're basically two weeks ahead. I had a conversation with you okay. uh, before with the slide and so we controlled because I was one of the computers for us, but we did agree on as far as schedule, timing, and everything else. I didn't realize that, for example, you haven't even discussed about it or anything else. I've done that already been done previously. So, um, you know, we're almost there to make a decision on that, but we're going to wait until we get more information and, and, uh, and all the other you know, budgets. So, I think we're moving along fine, but okay. we'll, we'll continue to, to move everything. Okay, and I know I saw the request for the representative for the school budget come through as well. Brad, was, were you or Tom going to do that this year? I was going to try to talk to the school. Uh, I think we are going to go through like department liaisons. Right, okay. We'll talk, talk that then. Yep. All right. Anything else around the budget? So. It's been six weeks because of the change in the spaces or whatever, so it's pushed and pushed back. I'm sorry? So the, the school budget apparently is a little bit pushed back because of the change in the state, you know, governments and all that. Yeah. So they're, they're allowed, the other school's not even needed until the 14th of March. And yeah. That's the public safety So. Yeah. Was it 14th of February? Yeah. 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 I thought it was 14th of March. So we're, we're, we're a little bit ahead of All right. All right. So that's probably enough on that then. Any other concerns, questions, dialogue for this? Okay. Great. All right. Second water operator discussion. My good sirs. <coughs> Uh, the water commission is in the water department are here to look at possible options for a second operator. Uh, let me just give you a very quick little bit of information about our system. Um, we have just under 500 service connections, which is about uh, 1,500 people or about 45% of the town. Um, and we do that with our existing employment structure is one superintendent full-time, one half-time administrator, and on-call operators, secondary on-call operators, which cover weekends, time off, and so on. Ideally, what we'd like to get to is a superintendent a part-time secondary operator, the part-time administrator, and the on-call operators. The reason for this is that DEP operating requirements are increasing, testing is increasing, sampling is increasing, we've increased the size of uh, the operations of our system. A couple of years ago we did uh, chlorine <coughs> addition, which we weren't doing previously. Um, so, we're really not in a situation, in an in a opportunity to employ another full-time uh, secondary operator. So we're looking at options. Can we split an operator with another department in town? Can we do a regional operator? Do we do a, a municipal agreement or a memorandum? Of, uh, agreement between communities and sh uh, share personnel or can we hire a part-time person don't know the questions that's why I've talked with Kelly and asked that we present um, 
a request and get legal interpretation of what we may be able to do. So that's why we're here tonight. Okay. So have, have you all had an ongoing discussion or is it just is this kind of the first we've talked of it? And like, let, let me also say that this isn't anything we're looking to do this year. We're not looking to change our budget. Uh, we're not looking to change uh, anything for this year. The water commissioners and the water department are looking at um, where we would like to be in the future, not necessarily this no. year, no, possibly that's... next year. Yeah. Um, and water systems can change, and hopefully it doesn't change for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> and we've, we've talked a lot internally about this for, yeah. for a, a couple of years. Couple of years. <laughs> yeah. um, and Brookfield um, doesn't have anybody else trained to, to run this water system, period. Um, and it would seem like maybe there should be, you know, maybe maybe somebody else, maybe that's employed by the town could be cross-trained to you know, cover the water department. Which is a situation which we had a, oh, it's, a it's, number it's, of years ago. Sure. We had a secondary sure. operator who worked for the highway. The department, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that worked out great. Yeah. Um, that is not the case right now, but it certainly, yeah. Might know, be an option. maybe it could be maybe an option. option. Maybe it could be an option. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, and, and Brookfield being a small operator, uh, we were uh, the smallest in distribution size and we're smallest in treatment size. Uh, and the Mass DEP regulations are designed to deal with you know the city of Boston <coughs> and uh, the small communities um, uh, get drug along with all of the other requirements so. so so as a superintendent I guess what's your what's your preference well I don't need another employee right, so when things are going good I can manage it by myself um, when I take a vacation we're left kind of begging and pleading on the neighboring communities help us out um, it's worked but it's it's not necessarily sustainable it's not sustainable it's not sustainable that's a very good way to put it I, uh, I don't, you know can can he handle the you know the public safety side of it and you know the health side absolutely absolutely um, but it's not really our, our best place so sustainable. when when we use our on-call operators for weekends <laughs> and for when Dennis is out on a sick leave or if goes on vacation, the operator, the on-call operators cover it. That's walking a very fine line. They are actually supposed to be here the whole time. That's, that's in, the, in the regulation. We're walking a fine line. Right. Uh, and we need to get better at that. But the system is run in compliance with all of the regulations. We provide a good service. Uh, but looking down the road, we we ideally need to make some modifications. Yeah. Gonna keep it going. Is this a steady need for a part-time person, or is it more hit and miss? Like like you said, when when you go on vacation, Dennis, or it, it's it's hit and miss. It's okay. it's hit and miss, and that's a that's part of the problem. We could yeah, use them forty hours a week this week. Yeah. We could use them forty hours a week in three months. Right. If he's out sick for four days, we need him for four days when he's right. out sick. Mm -hmm. uh, we could possibly use him as an on-call operator, fill in as an on-call operator. Uh, and obviously it's very hard to find somebody qualified. Basically anyone who's qualified has a job. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so they can't, can't leave their job. The other thing so is, and before we get somebody to come in, he probably needs to be here for 40 or 80 hours oh, to sure. walk through yeah, the system yeah. and familiarize himself so that he knows the system and he knows what to do. So, so do, do we have anybody currently in the town employee that's interested in training to become a part-time operator? Not that we are aware of. Not, not now. Right. Okay. 
we had asked at one point that if highway and it doesn't just have to be highway no. uh, was to look at hiring another employee could we in some way provide some kind of incentive to that employee to get licensed this is part of our question it, legally how do we do that uh, you know can we or how do we do that can I say something on that because my, <laughs> well, my, my only concern with that is if you get someone from highway to, to agree to do that and he's out for a week. Now you just took someone off a highway. That's, that's part of the problem. That's exactly, right. <laughs> that is that's, exactly part of the problem. And, and that's exactly what would need to happen. Are, are we aware of any other towns that are in a similar predicament as us where regionalization can make sense? Uh, all of the small towns are in, in tough situations. Uh, East Brookfield has gone through some, some uh, modifications of their operations. They hired a new superintendent. Uh, they have just hired or are training. Uh, they, they hired, yeah, they, they have their a second operator. And they also, I think, have a another on-call operator working at the highway. Right. West Brookfield had a superintendent and a full-time, their system is a little bit bigger, and a full-time secondary operator. He just left the secondary operator. So they are out looking for people. Would it make sense for the Well, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah and actually, uh, I'm glad you, that you were going down that road because I'm wondering, have we have we reached out to West Brookfield about potentially making that a regional operator? No. Uh, no, their system is more complicated than ours. Uh, and they really need they have the a need for they need a full time, a full -time yeah. superintendent yeah. and a full time operator. Mm -hmm. And our on call operators uh, right now are working very well. We're using uh, an agreement with the East Brookfield, plus, we have uh, the East Brookfield former East Brookfield superintendent is our on call operator. Dennis's father is an on call operator who was our previous yeah. superintendent. So I reached out and Pioneer Valley is in the process of regionalizing someone within their area and they sent me a sample. It's like a float operator? Uh, they, well, they sent me a sample agreement. It's an intermunicipal agreement between the towns where they share um, a secondary operator. Um, it, it, honestly, because this is something that's off, I haven't actually pulled it up. I haven't read it. I have it, but I haven't read it yet. Um, but I would, I would think it would make more sense for the towns, for us to try and find to towns find that want to partner with us, and then we can hire a full-time regionalized operator regionalized operator that will work x number of hours in each town to create a full-time job and then we share the cost of that person. just don't take vacations at the same time literally that's part of the regionalization <laughs> agreement may want somebody that's that's part yeah. time that they can call on as well so mm -hmm. what i had done is i had asked if the water commissioners in the water department would be willing to <laughs> reach out and, and kind of like start to see if, start, see, the start the discussion and see if anybody would be interested in that and that's kind of where we where we were when we were right. done. Okay. Just, just to kind of limit our our uh, area, the the operators have to be within a certain time just time driving distance time from yeah. Yeah. from town. So if you're a crazy driver, you can live further away. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> yeah. No, technically no. <laughs> just check it. But if you had a regional person and he's going to be away for a week, you could probably yeah. house one up. So it, I guess it would depend <laughs> on when we hire. If there if there's somebody local to one of the towns, if 
you know, it, it, you yeah. your, does you it have to be your town? Can, or, or be, can can it it's, it's, that's part of these jobs is you have to be local. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's just mm -hmm. how it is. Right, right, right. but I, I think what she's saying is that does the distance have to be to all the communities or can it be to one of the well, communities in the regionalization and, and have it still count? It would have to be with all of them, actually. Yeah, yeah. So I think that would be in of any community that's using their services. We have a legal one hour response time. So, so, so if you're up the one hour, so one, one hour, hour is pretty. Big. But one hour is not big. terrible, though. That's a pretty big it's geographic not, area. It's, it's not because if you're that's from the time the phone rings, you have one hour to be here, and, okay. and it, it happens quick when you're out to dinner and the phone rings. Or, uh, oh, I see what you're saying. It, it happens very quick. So, so you're saying that if we if we had a regional person, they would never be able to go to Boston for dinner because that's they might so get a call. Not, not, not right. if they were on call. Not if they're on Correct. call. Correct. Yeah. Correct. But they're not going to be on call all the time. No. no. But, okay. But that's right. that's what that, that, they right. yeah. nobody wants. And that's why that's why I was saying you'd have to look into housing for that person. So maybe send him down for Sturbridge for the week, the week that he's out. But that, no, I, that's I, all getting split up by whoever's in the regionalization contract. Mm -hmm. So it's not $100 a night. It'll be interesting to see what Pioneer Valley's come up with and, and how. And they're also working with a grant because the state is really, really, really pushing regionalization. And I mean really. Yeah, I went to the. It's, and one, one thing to consider is the shared resource the regionalization, that works really well when everyone gets an equal or prearranged share. Like one town gets half, another town gets quarter, another town gets quarter. This is more of a lumpy need. And so therefore, whatever agreement were made to the regionalization, there'd have to be some understanding that, okay, they are on, they are covering, say, Brookfield this week, so they don't get paged by Brookfield and East Brookfield at the same time. You can't be in two places at once. No, and that's, that's, that's a good point because what I've seen in the past, and I don't know if this applies to this particular position, but you have the parent town, for lack of a better term, and they pay the salary. It doesn't matter where they're working, they pay the salary and they mm -hmm. collect the money, money back from the back other from the other community. So the community mm -hmm. we own this person for per se, it may we didn't Brookfield may not be the one who owns it, right? So in the yeah. long term it might be some other town mm -hmm. and we sign on and because that's what works best for everybody. But for example, say we own that person. We're their full time employer. We're their we're their benefit provider, mm -hmm. we're their retirement and provider. and provider, and if they retire out of Brookfield, then we're going to be the ones who are providing their medical insurance for however long. And then each town pays a percentage of whatever that cost is. Mm -hmm. So this town may need, you know, 50% of their time, so their percentage would be more than, say, East Brookfield, which only needs you know, like two weeks out of the year or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and um, these are just examples. They're not actual reality. But that's how I've seen them work, where a town owns the person, and then it's it's split up uh, right. percentage-wise. So those are the kind of options that we yeah. uh, we're mm -hmm. asking for. Yeah. Uh, and it may take it some time to figure that all out. So. The, the, I, I think the reason that we're here tonight is that we just wanted all of this on the radar so that right. you nobody's know, right. blindsided yeah, yeah. Exactly. a year and a half today. when the budget right. is like, we need this because we regionalized and so everybody's right. on the same page. Yeah. Right. Or, or even to, to open that conversation with another town. Yeah. Um, we need to have this conversation first mm -hmm. before, we, yeah. before we do that. And I'm wondering if from a, if just from like a pure budget perspective, I, I would agree that um, it's, it's probably a little bit premature and that we need to have those dialogues with other communities. Mm -hmm. But I also think it might, it, it might warrant, and, and I'm just throwing this out as an example, potentially at least budgeting at a two day a week person, assuming that we could find somebody that once they were trained up would, would be basically on duty Saturday, Sunday. Um, to, to one alleviate some of the the um, burden on you in terms of at least having steady weekend coverage with the option that if that person was available when you were doing vacations it might be kind of like an immediate go to person and we and we actually have um, some money for that 
right. in, in our budget. So we're, we're not far from it. Right. So, so it might be worth at least, and, and I know other communities are looking for folks, at least testing the waters and seeing if we could start to, to bring somebody on board that way. Just, it's just a thought. Eventually, um, maybe the uh, second operator could also be the administrative assistant, which could be another. I mean, I don't. I'm not looking to change where we're at now because we have, we're in a good situation with that. Right. But years. in five years from now, that Ten may years. be a possibility. Right. Yeah. Um, but this, this is just to. Uh, bring this to the table and, and talk about it. Right. Yeah. We're, we're not in trouble. Right. Um, okay. This is not an emergency. It's not it's, an emergency. No. Oh no, future. we're actually looking like future farther casting. than like 30 days ahead. <laughs> <I'm so laughs> like, <laughs> well, we've been talking about this for probably no yeah. less than two years. <laughs> right. Right. And um, it was, we just felt that it was time to reach out and see legally what our options might be and, yeah. and uh, so so why don't we do this why don't we put it not on for the next meeting but maybe for for two down the line give a chance to kind of review the regionalization and see if we is that enough time you're looking at me like a deer in headlights well I, I think I think one that's kind of premature and two and this is not the right time of year for me to have time for that so if of we the budget. Can, yeah. So if we can end the warrant and you know, right, right. Tell me. And so okay. and I'll lend the But the if we I, can I thought you were sitting violin and the I know it's office. quiet up there now, that's, right? That's happening up there, laying in front of the fire, firing. Um, <laughs> would would it make sense? Yeah, me too. <laughs> would it make sense, you know, now that we've had this conversation for me to ask our neighboring neighboring town. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Maybe, yeah. Maybe they thought that you of start, start, Yeah, because you start it, it's going to be a lot better coming, I think, from you than necessarily well, yeah, we can, from yeah. We can just talk that about you it. Start, that, you know, maybe they have a need. Maybe they don't. Discussion with them. Right. You know, and that should yeah. be. And our neighboring towns, really, are that we can talk with are basically West Brookfield, North Brookfield, and East Brookfield. And, yeah. and I think is now. just, they don't even run their own system that's mm -hmm. done on a contract. And the system is huge, so. And would Warren be too far away? Well, we and we could go beyond, area? we could no, go yes. beyond <laughs> our, our you know, our adjoining towns, certainly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I think there's there's actually probably, I, I think that dialogue is definitely in order yeah. because I, th I think we're all realistic enough to at least entertain, you know, um, figuring out is it does it stay a second operator budget or does it become a second operator budget that we're handing over to somebody who, who has the primary ownership of the of the employee or is it I think they have the right idea by asking if you are going to back them if they begin these discussions yeah. because mm -hmm. if they go to these towns and nobody is interested then regionalization is out of the question right well and another and, another thought we've had is is there another position coming to Brookfield? We don't. We don't know that. Are we looking to, right. you know, uh, combine? And I'm, I'm making stuff up, but combine the highway with the cemetery, um, and maybe there's an opportunity for us to have some coverage there or uh, some other position that mm -hmm. we're not aware of. We just want to throw this out there. Right. And it's the same, like Brad, like you just said. You know, if we need him for 40 hours a week means that he's going to have to be with us 40 hours right, a week, yeah. which would mean he won't be at his other job. So that's part of the, the uh, challenge, the right. issue to try to deal but with. But it's also part of the budget. Oh, yeah. oh it absolutely the water is. Would be, the water department right. would be paying that portion of the budget. Right. And, you know, we'll say, for example, a highway department budget would not be funding that person's full salary. Right. So there's, it, it has the potential to work. Maybe yep. someday. Mm -hmm. Maybe someday. Yeah. But thank you. Just wanted to open up the discussion and mm -hmm. see where what our options are. Do you want to vote to give them your blessing to go forth and begin the search and conversation? And, and I mean, if you want it on the record, I'm happy to do that. So can I get a motion from one of y'all? Yeah. I move that we um, authorize the water department to investigate um, options for regionalization and or other methods of bringing on uh, a part-time secondary operator to assist them in their operations. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Appreciate that.
That's all we got. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, actually. Uh, let's move on. Town hall parking spaces discussion. I didn't add that. <laughs> I didn't add that. Yeah, I don't know why it's parking town hall spaces parking spaces. Discussion. Oh, yeah, that was on two times before. Um, you asked to put I did not ask to put that on. Okay, so let's... Mr. Howard wanted this maybe on Maybe you did something. something. So, there's no, I don't think there's anyone here to discuss this. So okay. let's move well, on to... So, yes. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't put it on the agenda, but we, we're having issues with not having enough parking spaces. And I didn't know who... There were vehicles parked back there. I didn't know who they belonged to. I was, I was told that they didn't belong to Mr. Howard and Tip Top. And so I sent him an email and asked him if they were his, and if they were, to please not park them overnight during the winter in this parking lot. And if they weren't his, if he knew who they belonged to, please let me know. So in asking him not to do that, because, because they were left there overnight and we couldn't plow, and because of the way they were placed, we didn't just lose their two spaces because the plow couldn't get in between them, we lost the whole back row of being able to park it. So he was upset and concerned that he may have done something wrong. And I explained that he didn't do anything wrong, it's just that we need to have the parking lot clear so that we can get the town trucks in there to plot. Yep. In the interim, Dennis, uh, Dennis yeah, uh, Ryan was really excited that we had done that because it, it's very frustrating for him to try and plow around them all the time because I, I guess this is where they normally park their vehicles. So what I would like to ask is if if the board would be willing to make the just the spots just around the building, well now with what's going on with the chimney, for town hall use and town hall employees. Because there's not enough spaces for everybody. So and just in the winter, people, I want, I don't want people walking and, and slipping in the ice and falling down and... and so does he not have parking over here? He does. He has parking, he has a parking lot behind the building and he has parking in front of this building. Well, he can't park in front of the building during in from November to March or April. Okay. Because there's no parking on the street. And streets. so in the alternative, I said if you are going to, not to park overnight, because there's room for both his vehicles behind this building. If you're not going to, just if you are going to park here during the day, to park at the far end of the lot. Yeah. And they stop parking at night, and then they, but they, but they're not parking at the far end of the lot. And the last couple of nights they've been in the parking lot again. So. I'm getting complaints. I'm dealing with complaints. That's the only reason it's here, and that's why you know. That's the only reason I'm discussing it. But I thought Mr. Heller asked to be on the agenda. No, this was something that was on from a few times. I know back. when it was on, yeah. but I thought that right. it was placed on it because Mr. Heller asked to be on the agenda. Right. So, so that's why this topic came up in the first place. But they're not doing anything wrong. All right. I did is ask them if they would please not park there for the window. Right. So. Yeah. Because I know. Um, Over the place. Mm -hmm. Kelly? Mm -hmm. could, could that area be designated as part of the winter parking ban? The selectmen can absolutely do that. And, and like I said, I, wa I wanted the front to be for town hall business. <laughs> or town hall employee and town hall employees like so if you're not here for the town hall then, then please leave the spaces open for people who come here and work here because there there are not enough for everybody. But the back parking lot in, in total should be with the parking bin because even if they park out back. Uh, right, which is why I asked them not to park at night. Right. I mean I have no issue with them using the parking lot at all. It's just that right. I I get complaints from people that they don't have anywhere to park. So, Kelly, is the problem that they're parking overnight and and or long-term parking in the town hall parking lot in back? The problem is that the plows can't plow around them because they're parking there when, okay. in, so now, I, and I think what happened is that they, they're, they're parking there overnight and they're moving if the weather's going to be bad. But you were at the, um, 
department head meeting. Ryan was mm -hmm. very excited that there was nobody in the parking lot and he could actually treat the parking lot properly because there were no cars in. So he's on board with the whole please don't park here at night thing during the winter. Right. In the summer it's a non-issue at all. But in the winter time it is an issue. So Yeah. Does it, I guess I'm trying to understand because you say people have trouble getting to the town hall, but that to me is not a problem at night. And whereas clearing the parking lot is more of an uh, the parking lot needs to be clear after hours when they're when everyone's gone, so that Ryan and his crew can clear the parking lot. So I'm trying to there seem to be two issues here. I'm trying to yeah, there are not enough out. parking spaces during the day if the town hall is busy. Okay. For everybody, mm -hmm. but the the real issue, and that you know, people come and go and whatever, and we've lost, like I said, we've lost all the parking lots yeah. directly behind the town hall. It's not an issue when those parking spaces are, are open. open. Okay. Oh, so it's a because of the issue with the chimneys and the bricks. Yeah, yeah. we now have right now we've got a we've got a, we we've have got have a, a parking park. squeeze basically. Okay. Other than that, the only issue was not to have anybody park in the parking lot overnight during the winter because. The, the plows couldn't get in, and when they park yeah. there, and then then all these spaces are gone because there's snow in them, so no one can use them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So years ago, I mean, just to give a little bit of history, when we first like really expanded that rear lot, right? At least one highway superintendent ago, the one request was was not to have anybody park along the back of the building during the winter. Uh, but there were a lot of res there I don't want to say there were a lot of residents, but there was at least probably a handful of folks that would park in the far parking spots because of the parking ban if they didn't have enough parking inside the village because of, um, you know, for whatever reason. You mean kind of overlooking the police station? Yeah, that the, part? The, yep. the area overlooking the police station. Mm -hmm. Because it's not convenient, but you can plow around the cars if they're if they're located there but what happened well it happened that during that first snowstorm that folks weren't thinking about the the plowing and had left the vehicles right behind the town hall mm -hmm. which you can't plow the lot properly if you've got anything in that row right there um so and right now because of that back row being like totally gone i mean typically we put up some sort of barrier for most of the backside during the winter when we're getting real snow because we use we would have people's cars get hit by snow coming off of the roof so you can't i mean i know that we have it closed because of the chimney but we typically during the winter months don't get to use those slots anyway in in less temperate winters um, because of the fact we've that we've had a lot of ice there's been a lot of ice treatment even though yeah. there hasn't been right, right. Ryan was saying he's had exactly the same number of events this year even right. though we haven't had the snow right so all right so so that's that's all this is is it just quick question is there a sign that says no overnight parking allowed there's not there? no and that's one of the things that, that I we mean we could get a sign and then we have Mike Siri to enforce you know give them a ticket if someone parks there well we could Absolutely. And I mean, it's like $150 for a sign when it gets done. Right. I mean, and, and at this point, really, it's just, it's it's one set of people that's parking there. So uh, I don't think we even need to pay for a sign. We just need to, you know, consider what we're doing, why we're doing it, and then just talk to them. Yeah, that's up. great. So <laughs> I know the last two weeks have been very unusual at the police department. Uh, but I stopped down here one day and this back parking lot was absolutely filled with 24 to 30 state vehicles. Troopers. And, and if we ever had a need to get a fire engine out, it wouldn't have happened. Nope. Right. And they, and they actually, and I understand why, and I'm not an issue. I'm not. I'm not I'm but, but when the people who were here early, we couldn't leave because all of our cars were blocked in by all of their cars. There was no way. We're, we're here so the fortunately, the fortunately, there was no need to get a fire engine out. Right. But if, and I, like I said, a totally unusual event. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it never happens again. But that could have been a catastrophe. Right. Now, I don't know where they would go if they couldn't park there. I mean, like I said. Right. Unusual, yeah. but, but when, when I looked out there, I said, the fire department could not get an engine on if they needed it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it would have made more sense to rally all those vehicles <coughs> down at Lewis Field rather than where they did it, but I wasn't in charge of the operation. So, so I don't know if they ever got brought to. They actually used the fire station as a command location. Yeah. So they were using the fire station. That's where they were so. gathering, that's where they were eating, that's where they were yeah. and doing their talking. So. That's a little terrifying. The dragon has risen. <laughs> <laughs> so. I feel like I'm listening to college radio again. Um. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I think rather than, than voting like a, a generalized parking ban, let's let's just try to deal with this from the standpoint of I'll swing over and have a conversation. Yeah, it's just because I don't, I want the, the spaces to be able to be plowed. Like I said, yeah. it, it's, a, it's an overnight thing. Don't take the spaces. There's parking behind their own building. Right. So... It's not like they have to use the on-street parking. I don't know. If I think the one, the one, fit. the one thing. Well, they they're, had a they're tenant or something, so their their vehicles will fit. The the one concern I would have is that if we do this, we need to have a talk with the highway super to make sure that they don't make it virtually impossible to get those vehicles out so that people can get into the place of business, because we've had some history where. Um, the plow operators will not be too particularly cautious about oh, how or what they're leaving. Oh, yeah, they, they can't plow them in. That would yeah. be awful. Yeah, so so the big thing I would have is is, is uh, I'll have the conversation to say, hey, make sure you, you, you tuck them behind the building. But the flip side is we need to make every effort not to plow them in because otherwise you're, you're landlocking one of our few going businesses. Yeah, we don't want to do that. We definitely don't want to do that. Right. And like you said, it's, they're not doing anything wrong. It's right. just a matter of being able to keep the parking lot clear yeah. right now. So. Yeah. And, and had... It's just... Two cars... That, that you think it's just two cars, it's just two spaces, but because of the way they parked, it was actually six spaces that we didn't get plowed because you couldn't get in around them because of where they Yeah, but that, was, that, but that was behind that the was building. That was when they were behind the building. that was risky, and it's, I'm really glad I asked them to move their vehicles because yeah. the next the day, day the chimney came, came down. down. The yeah. next mm -hmm. day, it was like, yeah. ooh, it was fate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, we'll do that yeah. and see how it rolls. Okay. Um, so, department, so, what's that? Do we want to... Vote on a policy, or are we just going to I don't know. just <laughs> try and move forward? I think you should just play it by ear and, and okay. talk yeah. to I'm good with that. It's, I mean, fundamentally, I say if we ask people not to park overnight, mm -hmm. that's going to prevent long-term parking and leave it for generally for people with business with town hall, yeah. and it's going to leave it open in the week uh, overnight for Ryan to plow. Yeah, and it includes the weekends too, because the snow happens on the weekends, and the fire department needs to be able to get in and out of there, put their own vehicles in. Mm -hmm. So. But uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think we necessarily need to vote something where it's not like a wholesale issue. Right. Because right. I mean, so. how many people park in this parking lot when the Apple Country Fair is going on? Yeah. So it, it, it's this is this is just a really teeny tiny little you know flower table thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beth, I'm getting paged out for work. I've got about ten more minutes. So if there's anything you think we need to cover before I have to go and answer my call? Uh, cover the accounting services contract, and then I think every day, oh, and we're, we're going to be discussing my, reopening my contract, so would you like to participate in either of them? I'm sorry, what's the second one? The accounting reopening contract? Reopening my contract. Uh, let's see. I will do, let's do your contract. Okay. So as you, as you know, I was there were ways voted at the town meeting for everybody across the board. Um, my contract has a dollar amount in it. So because the dollar amount is in there, the account was refusing to pay what we voted at town meeting. Then we have to reopen this so that I can um, access the funds that were voted at town meeting. 
Ah. And we did vote it. Yeah, the, the town did vote to raise her salary okay, by that amount on, on the on the floor. So I, I think the town's will on this point is clear. Yeah. So I put what the actual one was uh, up above, and then the other one was just suggested language. I don't know. We already know what this year is. Next year is the last year of my of my current contract. So I don't know what. How you want to do that one? Is that what's voted at town meeting, or do you want to put in a percentage, or do you want to put in a cola? I don't, I don't know how you want to handle the last year. I can tell you that my inclination would be to go with functionally town meeting, but yeah. right. Would it make sense to um, modify the contract to say, um, or more should that um, should a greater amount be approved That's at the, the annual town meeting or at a town meeting? Maybe just in case it's under special also, and that way, if it does get increased on the floor of the town meeting, the contract will be compatible with that. I'm, I'm okay with that language. I don't know exactly what to write in there. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. What it, what I think instead, what we would put is. What is the police? So police is on a separate contract. Yeah. But yeah, but he's at like ten or fifteen percent. Because you were playing catch up, his his contract yeah, his had contract. massive jumps in it because you were playing catch up from okay. the neighboring towns. Towns. He was so far behind in the salary, so he has very large yeah. increases. Mm -hmm. So his was actually more than what was voted last year. Yeah. Gotcha. So. Yeah. So my thought would be the language up to the point where it says, um, uh, like through where it says amount equal to two and a half percent strike or federal COLA and replace that with um, or or as voted at town meeting. What do you Which, which think? part of the contract are you looking at? I was I'm looking at Article X salary, yeah. the, the secondary proposed language that Kelly had provided. I think it's the first page. Oh, okay. I'm looking it's page for three of four in the contract. Yeah. Is the yeah. original? I don't, I don't see proposed it's language. Separate, it's, it's, it's no, no, she just it's a she, separate sheet. Yeah. Oh, okay, there we go. That's uh, so. Is there ever? I, I mean, there's never a time where federal cola would end up being more than we approved, anyways, because we're always going to at least approve federal cola. True. There's a, chance, there's a chance that we wouldn't go to full federal COLA, say, in a year where, like, federal COLA this year is, like, 8.9%. 8 8.7. Or 8.75. Yeah. So um, I know that we, last year, we that was the hill we died on, saying we're going to do it with the federal COLA. Mm -hmm. I don't know, are we doing it again this year or not? So that's what was part of the budget discussion next next meeting was right. whether or not you're going to decide whether you're going to do that. Right. So I think by using the language as voted at town meeting, regardless of how that discussion comes out, it gives us that that leeway relative to it. Yep, I agree with that. So 2.5% or as voted at town meeting, whichever is greater for the fiscal year of 2024. So if you decide to go... And if 2025 changes... I don't have a contract for 2020. Oh, okay. So yeah. this sure. only covers one so, more year. So three really years. one more year yeah, anyways. Yeah, one so. more year, and if it doesn't work, then you guys don't like me. <laughs> so, but I think, I just think it's, I, I just would prefer to do it that way rather than, than state it as federal COLA, even though that's probably what we're going to wind up with. Mm -hmm. I, I like the idea of tying it to the Vote rather yeah. than I, I actually agree with you. I, I think that's I like that idea as well. I'm I'm perfectly okay with that. Okay. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just it's very simple. You yeah, know what? Some stuff is gonna be out of the some stuff is gonna be out of our hands, we'll guarantee you two and a half percent. And if the town wants to give you more, it's up to them. <laughs> so there you go. Um, do we wanna So make a motion? Do we, do we have to read the whole thing or just say that we want to um, strike out federal COLA and um, to replace Article X salary in the current contract with the language as amended. Yeah. There you go. There's your motion. That's your that's your okay. motion right there. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> so so actually, what we would do is uh, uh, replace Article Ten. 
in the employment agreement of uh, Kelly Robbins with the town of Brookfield. So I make a motion to replace Article 10 in the employment agreement between Kelly Robbins and the town of Brookfield uh, with the following language. Effective January 1st, 2021, the town shall pay the administrator the sum of 82,500 for fiscal year 2022, effective July 1st, 2022. The salary shall be 87,368 for fiscal year 2023, beginning on July 1st, 2023. The amount shall be equal to two and a half percent or as voted at town meeting, whichever is greater for fiscal year 2024. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. And then. All right. Thank you. Excuse me. You all got. You gotta go. Go. I got. I gotta go. <laughs> oh, we still have a quorum. Yay. Three boss calls. I said three boss calls. The, the people that pay my day job call. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> that is a struggle when you. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm gonna step on the hall and triage this. I might be able to defer it. Okay. Great. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about the. Uh, Town of Brookfield contract for town accounting ser services. Did you want to do the private meetings, or do you want to skip that until? We could probably skip it. I mean, I just, yeah, it's not really that critical right now. Okay. I mean, I just want to see if, you know, in the past we've always spoke. You know, someone from the select board would speak to board people. Yep. Do we want to continue that? Yeah, I, I don't, think we do. I don't I know if you and it. Tom, I don't know what your bandwidth is. <laughs> so, um, bandwidth is always a struggle for me, but I'm willing to give it a college try, mm -hmm. for sure. So, and are is, we are, are we talking just in general and bring back reports about like what's going on in the town, or are we talking more along the lines of strictly for budget? Because historically, it's you've been, been around more, so I would. <laughs> historically, it's been focused more around budget, though. I think that there, I think if we were more let's call it disciplined in terms of the selectmen mm -hmm. reaching out on some regular cadence to, I mean, I think one thing that's been good is I think that the monthly department head meeting, granted I only probably, I only make it like probably once every second or third month. So no, and came to the yeah, that, that was good. Yeah. So, you know, maybe. You, maybe we just start can, doing a rotation with the department heads. Yes. The department head yeah. meetings and then you can see what's going on. And here with, uh, the yeah. I mean, my, my bigger concern outside of because I, I feel like the communication is pretty good with everyone in the town here, with the exception of I just personally have concerns and would like to have outreach more with the school in Tantasqua, even though we don't have control over those things. You know, I've heard from a few different people now, like that they need a new roof over at the school. Mm -hmm. And what are we looking at? Potentially, it's about, it, uh, roughly around six hundred thousand dollars within the next four years. We've um, I spoke with Kathleen about it. I think the first couple of months I was working here, I had gone over for a tour, and I said, "Why are there so many buckets?" <laughs> and she said, "Well, we keep patching the roof, and every time we patch the roof, something else, it, it, you know, the runs water down runs downhill. Yeah. So it keeps and finding." What, what else is there outside so, of that? I mean, if she hasn't said that, what else hasn't been brought up? But she did say it. No, I know, but I mean. She did at that point, but what else was out there? I mean, it was because you brought it up. You said there's buckets on the floor. What if she brought that up? Well, I, I don't... You know what I'm saying? So prior to my arrival, I don't know what kind of communication the board had with the school to begin with, but she provided us with a list of... of um, what their capital plan is. Yeah, mm -hmm. and what they've got planned. And so we discussed the roof. It was we're going to need a new roof and we can't pay for the whole thing ourselves. She uses a lot of, I believe it's school choice money to do capital improvements in the building. She's done some amazing things with that money. She's, mm. she's done wonderful things for that building with those funds. Um, 
Brookfield's actually extremely lucky to have her. She's very innovative. No, I think the school the is much yeah, better than the other schools. And, and I think one of the challenges, I, I think one of the challenges is I wish they had prioritized the roof ahead of some right. of what they've done, right? So we uh, know and, that but, we, but they've also, and let me just, I'm sorry, I apologize, no, no, I, but let I, me I just finish this, is over the last, um, they have also historic, historically applied more than what's typically done of their school choice money to their budget. So they've put in, they've they've contributed more than six hundred thousand dollars over the last four to five years back to operational expenses when they could mm -hmm. have just squirreled that money away yeah. for the roof. So that's where. Well, so. Well, what I told her was that now that I know that, the, you're going to be seeking 50% of the roof cost from the town, that I will put a warrant article on and we will create a, a fund to cover this so that in five years, mm -hmm. the money's actually already there. But they're really going to wait five years to do it? Well, she says that that's when it will have to be done, so within five years. So we put 50000 in last year. We have enough. I want to put seventy-five in this year with with free cash. So we're we're not. That's that's the plan with the roof is that we are we are aware that it needs to be done that we're saving. Um, I spoke with Maya about the roof uh, yesterday. Met with Maya. They have a tiny little grant that we can apply for that could go to it. I see tiny. It's ten thousand dollars, but when your roof is six hundred thousand. No, but that's one of the things that they really like to see is is people taking, being proactive right. about things, knowing they're coming, and not just being reactionary, mm -hmm. um, being prepared for it. So we're looking at that sort of, of stuff. We need to actually implement a, a roof inspection program here anyway. So right. It's on a list of things to, to do. But as far as what are we doing with Tantastical? I have no idea what the board has done in the past. Um, We've got a hand raised. So. To, ask, to answer your question directly, uh, in my five or six years, I'm sure Beth will back me up, the school board, Deb Boyd, and the people that she assigned the school committee for the elementary school have been the most uh, diligent and proactive as far as providing information to our advisory committee internal questions and being on top of things. And between Tom, myself, Steve Gillis, and um, uh, a couple of other people, um, we've had no issues whatsoever with response and information coming back. So, so you guys, you guys have a good idea of what's coming. We have uh, a general idea as what um, right. Kelly has said, but I feel confident just based on on my experience, the people that are there. Now again, the new gentleman, Steve, I met him once. He came to several of the meetings last year and then sort of had him in training. He goes back to them now to answer any question that we might ask. But as I said, I think they have the systems in place they're very astute as far as gauging what state monies might come in, projecting things. The volunteers that are on the school committee for the elementary school, I know I've met a couple of them personally. Uh, some of those moved on to the regional school committee. Um, they're all top notch. Mm -hmm. they're very, you know, they're young. They have kids in the school system. They're very on it. So um, I, I just wanted to that okay. my experience has been really positive. Okay. Uh, and you really have to chase them for anything. It's just, uh, again, there has been a transition now, so we'll see how that works. But um, I'm confident that things will continue the way they've been. Boyd is a phenomenal financial manager. So she is great at reaching mm -hmm. out. She's very proactive. I've dealt with her. Um, when I was in Holland, and she was, we already knew what was going on. Yeah. But she's always nice enough, her husband in the past, to come to the town meeting because we always have citizens who are concerned about, you know, it's, you know, it's a large budget and we really have no 
control either, you know, we vote it down or up. We don't have a play item ability to do anything. But she always comes and makes a nice presentation she has in the past. We always ask her to do that because again, you know, she knows the better than anyone. Mm -hmm. so. Next. Yep. So uh, we're very fortunate to have the school systems that we have in town. Uh, and a lot of the school, a lot of the elementary school budget uh, is enhanced with the school choice. Uh, one of my concerns has always been uh, with all the new construction in town, obviously there are more kids, I would assume that the school choice uh, availability is shrinking. Um, and since the bulk of our tax money kind of goes to the school system without any say, I, I've always thought that the selectmen or the town should have a very good working relationship with the school board or school boards to, to you know, not, find, not have to go up and find out the, that the roof is leaking, but that it should, you know, that should kind of be brought forward, uh, you know, what's the history with with school choice? What's the forecast? Where are we headed? What are the class sizes? I mean, and, and the, the school budget is, number is so big, it gets thrown out on the floor and it doesn't get a debate, but if they want to give a $25 uh, uh, raise to the cemetery, they'll, they'll argue for hours about it. <laughs> I mean, it's so, I just think there needs to be a very close relationship between the selectmen or the town administrator and the school committees so that you know what's going on. Since it's such a big piece of the pie, uh, I just just my just my thoughts. Yep. Thank you for that. I, I think he's agreeing with you, right? Yeah. Sorry? I, I think I think you're agreeing with Brad. Right. I mean I'm just exactly. saying, right. I, 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 yes. okay. Just to answer Don, I don't think you need to be troubled, but I think proactive and taking Well, yeah, no, I'm talking about being more, being proactive. Yeah. Because right now, I think it's the town administrator and the advisory committee or have been sort of the, well, before the town administrator, basically the advisory committee being the ones who were. Mm -hmm. Who were going over and, going and over being everything. part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, that was minutia. I mean, and. and Tom definitely down in, in the minutia, so uh, speak with Tom off to the side yeah. as far as I can't. His, his feelings. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 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 That is one of the problems with having a three-person board. One of the problems of having a three-person board is that we can't even like well, like. We're, like we're a ten million dollar organization with three CEOs that can't talk to each other. <laughs> they wonder why the communication is dysfunctional. But but every year that we've been together on the committee, his first question when he goes in to ask the elementary school mm -hmm. uh, people is. What's the trend for the school choice? What, how many people are going to be? Yeah, and, and 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 it sounds really interesting to do that. But here's the problem with that. Okay, regardless of the buildup in the town, right? There are years when we've had fewer people and fewer kids in town total, but the fifth grade doesn't have any room for school choice, right? And then. The, the next year it's the second grade and then we've got you know holes all over some other grade because you know what it all it takes is like you know a power outage and seven years later you don't have room for kids in school choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, I, and I could be I, I could be wrong on you this know? but it, is there like something like 30 new houses being built right now? That's, that's about right. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. not something that I would know. That's, that's something else. No I know but I just uh, that's that's about the right no but I think that's the right number. That's, roughly, right, the, that's right. roughly the right amount. Right. And so, I mean, and, and, and it's been something that, that Kathleen has been warning us about for years, is that periodically we will have these spikes, you know, or just straight up not room, right? Um, and then they can't come. That's and then they, and then they can't, can't come. They can't come. And, then, right. and since they can't come, we just need to, but the flip side of it is, right, and hypothetically speaking, with the, with the tax base growth, right, mm -hmm that it's at least as expensive as that is it's still less of a burden because you've also got the 
more tax revenue. revenue, right? Yeah. So, so, and, and so it's, it's so not for a zero school sum. choice, according to the the, um, the DOE and a primer on anything you ever want to know about Chapter Seven, right? We spend roughly Brookfield spends roughly twelve thousand dollars a year per child at school choice, and we get like five grand, five grand for tuition. Right. So it's mm -hmm. it's good if it's full. <laughs> right. So, um, and and functionally, right, the the larger concern would be if we hit the point where we don't have any room for any school choice, it also means we're, we may be starting to hit that tipping point where the school's not big enough, and that's a whole nother That's a whole nother kettle of fish. Right. I don't think we're anywhere close to that, which is the good news. The bad news is we need a roof. Yes. <laughs> so, we need a roof, so we're and, and six money year, away and, But yeah. six years sounds, if they've got buckets everywhere, so here's my concern. And, mm. and, and They don't feel that it's, it's an imminent catastrophic failure. But that didn't but, happen overnight. But, yeah, but and here's the other thing is any, any moisture like that could be potentially doing more damage than... Yeah, I wouldn't want to wait five years if it was my house. Yeah. So... <laughs> so we, well, I, I, they said they were going to... Kathleen had said at the time, and there's no commitment in this statement because we were... She was giving me a tour of the school. This was a casual conversation. Right, right, right. And I simply said that I will start putting money away mm -hmm. so that if we pay half, it will be there when the time comes. Right. You know, it's kind of unfortunate. So I, I mean, through on my promise that that's what we did with with the free cash. Hindsight, obviously, is twenty twenty. But I mean, we could have possibly thrown a roof into this bond <laughs> that we just went for. But it would have to be voted at town. No, I know. I'm saying it's too late now, but I'm saying... Yeah, we could have put it on last if, year. If this had been talked about and caught earlier. Yeah. But, I mean, what have, shoulda, coulda. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. Excuse me. I thought the decision was made, though, to do it incrementally. That was a joint decision, I believe. I don't think we ever considered funding all at once, did we? No, when we discussed the town's portion of it, it was it was discussed that it would be saved for incrementally based right. on the right. date that they were mm -hmm. planning targeting. targeting for the replacement. Right. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I think we were in sync, Brad, as far as what we determined. It was just a question of judgment whether you know the rain is going to be more or less than whatever they they mm -hmm. anticipated the plans. So mm -hmm. That's I So when I put this up, actually, I wasn't, I know we went off on the tangent on the school. It was really more, you know, I'd like to at least talk to the boards more often, but I don't want to step on anyone's toes. <laughs> I'll, I'll invite you to our next meeting if you yeah. want to come. I mean, I'm very happy to have I just said, for me, it's just getting caught up with things. Yeah, so, it's been, so, so I think, I, I, so, yeah. so, 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 so I think what we, I think this has been a good discussion. I think there's there's two different questions really. Internal town department communication, cross communication with the schools, mm -hmm. right? and and functionally it's two separate things. So Okay. Anyway, so I'm going to talk over the the background noise. Um, so, anywho. Um, so, Excuse me. did you have the bandwidth or, or interest in being the liaison with the school for the budget process from the Board of Selectmen? No, because it sounds like advisory is already doing it. Okay. They'd like one from both. They like one okay, from then, both. Yes, cool then, yes, then, then yes, then yes. Then yes. Then yes. Then yes. Yeah. 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 So, and then I, I think what I'd like to do is let's start let's start scheduling or planning which of us is going to be at the department head meeting because rather mm -hmm. than, and then find out if any of the department, and I guess we could eventually break out the department so that if for some reason, I, I, I prefer that the department heads deal with you first, basically, and then if there's something that needs escalated to one yeah. of us, we can just contact. Well, I mean, what I've noticed in talking to the different department heads, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's one thing when you have them up here 
for Kelly to talk to. Yeah. I find it completely different, different what they have to say when space. I go and talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In their space. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So. It's why I suggested that if you really want to know what's going on in the apartment, not to call them in here. Right. No, go down, go them, visit them. Go and go yeah. and see yeah. where they live. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so if we wanted to, let's just put it on the agenda for maybe the next meeting for us to like just go down the department list and and, okay. and line that up. Mm -hmm. So we'll each pick departments and what have you. So, all right. Um, town alerts. Did you want to talk about town alerts? Um, so we are signed up for it. It was free. Are, are you up to speed with this? Okay. Um, I don't think so. Okay. So the towns around us have all subscribed to this thing called My Town Alert. And it's an app-based program on your phone where you can get live alerts. Kelly's set up. Most of the department heads are set up. Okay. Um, it's just another method of communication to Supplemental residents. To Supplemental to what we already have. All right. Have we put it out there that people can sign up? Not yet. Not well, yet. yeah, no, not yet. No, I haven't. I, I, I was, no, I haven't. I haven't yet. Um, I told her that we're about to and I have everything I just have another yeah, time. It needs to go up on the town website and post it yeah. here at the town hall and um, actually if you could do if you could do that and then, the have, and then have <laughs> and then have and then have Lindsay share the web link for the Okay. I can do that. Okay. Did you check it for typos? The flyer I haven't looked at I haven't okay. looked at anything. <laughs> So great. Yeah, it's it's free. It's a non-invasive app. It doesn't ask for any personal information, and you can sign up. There's a few towns that are on that are using it currently in Massachusetts, and you can click on them, and you'll see the alerts for all those towns, yeah. and they'll automatically show up when you open up the app. The alerts for those towns are on your screen. Okay. So. Well, there you go. Oops. Yeah, and and we put up that there's my town alert. How cool is that? Yeah, it's 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 supplemental. It's not the reverse 911, but the more people we can reach, right? And, and, and you have the to have a smartphone, it. so right. <laughs> it can't be primary. <laughs> no house phones. No house phones. <laughs> Got it. No flip phones. All right. Anything will, else? That? Will that work for computers also, people who don't have a phone? No, Sorry. it's only app based. Well, Chromebooks. It, it worked on my, on my desktop. From the administrator side. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, just. So, probably only if they have a tablet or Chromebook. I was going to say, it's. You can get the app through the. I don't think it's a deal breaker. Through the no. Google store. <laughs> It's free for the people that have them. Yeah, so. and if they want it, you know, it's just it's just another way for us to, you know, reach out to people and say, and it's not. So we can we can send out something that you know basketball signups or yeah. this date in here, or we can we can say there's this week. Not that we would use this as an emergency service in any way, shape, or form, but. Yeah. Hey, it's really Ryan cold. is out and he's got he's got sees there's a tree down and the road is closed. He can go on his phone if he want if he has the time to do this, he could be dealing with the emergency of a tree down. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that this is but that's something that could be used. This tree is down we're, we're this removing road. it and it cleared at whatever time. Yeah. You know. Yep. Uh, Council on anything can use it to, to let people know that uh, there's a coffee hour there'll be extra pastry or something. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, chair yoga has been, has been changed to 9.30. <laughs> <laughs> extra pastry. <laughs> so, sorry. Right. Call us instead. All right, outsource accounting services. Folks, we digress. Yes, Fine. we do. All right. All right, I apologize. I gotta go. I thought I was gonna get free and they pulled me back in. Okay. Sorry, we need you please on to the... Um, all Every the departments. No, I don't get any. Oh, So, um, so this is for FY 2024. Where there was there anything specific that you wanted to call out in the? No, I just wanted you to see it. He sent it to me. 
as a DocuSign document, and I couldn't print it. And and I said, no, I'm not going to sign this. The board needs to look it over. I'm not just going to go ahead and, and re-engage the company. Um, right. Can you technically sign this? I can sign. I oh, we voted her the right to sign all contracts. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I, I have stated that I will always bring them to you unless it's... Right. So if it's a blanket castle form, which is a... If, that's a form that we have to sign every time we get state money. Mm -hmm. I just signed those now instead of waiting for a selectman's meeting, and it's really helped Speed roll things, yeah. grants in from the state. Um, I can sign reimbursements for Chapter 90 so that if there's snow incidents and you guys can't meet for five weeks, we're not borrowing money to cover our snow debt, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So if it, that's the kind of stuff that I would sign without discussing. Mm -hmm. If it's procurement as the chief procurement officer, and it's it's a project that's already been approved, I go over the documents and, and I sign the contract. So all this is is just the next contract for 24? It is. Um, the, the only thing I noticed, and I didn't know if it was a change from the prior year when I read through this, is that it says minimum of six on-site visits a year. I seem to remember it used to be more, but if you're comfortable with that, so I'm okay with it. This is this is in here because if it's late, I don't have nice words. Um, <laughs> If there's a disagreement here, they can say, we're not going to come to the town hall anymore. Mm -hmm. We're only going to come six times a year because that's what's in the contract. Right. And I've seen that happen with other towns where there were departments that were extremely aggressive toward this business. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were grossly overstepping their boundaries as the town. With the accountant and demanding this, 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 and this, and she said, "No, I'm not coming back. I'll come in six times a year. That's it. Everything has to be scanned and sent to me." Right. So that's just something you need to be aware of. That at any point they can say we're no longer doing on-site visits other than what's required. Everything has to be scanned and turned in, um, which means that every single and I don't know who would do that. Whose job would that be? to compile all the things that are normally given to the accountant and scan them for like the bill payment, the bill schedule, or the right. accounting. So you need to be aware that that is actually, I haven't, I've only seen them use it once, but that's okay. something. Sounds like they don't typically do it without cause. No, no, I don't think they do do it without cause. Okay. But it doesn't say they need cause either. No, so it doesn't. Um, it went up uh, roughly five thousand dollars a year because I think we're paying. It. No, I think we're at forty six. So it went up a thousand. So it went up a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not that much. Okay. So do we make a motion to approve it then? Or? And this is for FY twenty four is starting July, July of okay. this year. Yeah. So I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with their work. They're a good company. Lori's a good accountant. I've been working with her so a little bit. Do we She's want good. A, a motion to uh, approve the contract then? So I make a motion to approve the Town of Brookfield contract for Town Accounting Services for year 2024. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. 350th uh, committee appointment for Christina Fredella. So she would make the fifth person to the 350th committee. Great. So do we have that motion? Oh, so I make a motion to appoint Christina Perdella as a member of the 350th anniversary committee. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. All right. Capital planning. I didn't run this long. It's slow today. Um, yes. Yes. Um, the capital planning. 
so what did we want to discuss relative to this? This is the older plan, and we're getting towards the end of it, actually, as terrifying as that is. We, so is this brought up because I brought it up? Yes. We can skip over that. Okay, so we're not ready to talk about that today? More just that I would like to try to reinvigorate that committee. Okay. You see? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> we have to find him first. Yeah. Right. Um, oh, gee, you know if anybody would volunteer for it before? One. Right. <laughs> Committee one. <laughs> so um, I think one of the things, though, let's just, while we've got this on hand, right, fundamentally, so we have the, we have that, the bond issue, right? What is that going to do with regards to what this was in terms of amount? What? I'm trying to, looking at the capital plan, and okay. originally we had the police station at $150,000 a year, but our bond, our consolidated bond, it looks like is, do we know what the amortization schedule is going to look like? On this, because I mean, fundamentally, that would be one of the one of the pieces for the update for this. We'd have to ask Amy if she has okay. it. I know that they sent it to us, but I, I don't know the numbers off the top. So, thank you. But I think one of the things that we want to do is, because I tell you what, one of the one of the things that. I see it work is that it's a lot easier to have people come in and edit than it has to have people come in and create. Absolutely. So um, I, I think one of the thoughts that I would have is um, first of all, let's review what's already on here that's been done fundamentally. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then I think from a kind of financial governance perspective, did the account never get us like revenue estimates for like the next like, three to five years or is that something that they do or is that something we would typically do through our own purview? Revenue for the, to the town? Yeah. I think that that would be a shot in the dark by anybody who did it, but I don't know who would normally okay. project that. They project it every year on the recap right. sheet, but right. they only do one year do at a time. Year and they, time. they have traditionally underestimated by a, by a, a, consistent a considerable amount. 12 percent every every year. Right. With kicking and screaming this year, it was still only 10. It was 10 percent underestimated. Right. I think one of the things we should do is for the, um, if we don't have a committee stood up yet, mm -hmm. one of my recommendations is can we make one of the agenda items for the February department head meeting, bring what you see for your department to be your five-year capital needs? Yeah. Um, because let's start by getting the department heads to contribute that as part of the department head meeting. Mm -hmm. And then as we start to look for people for a committee, we can say, hey, here's this draft plan that came from the department heads. Right. Have at it. So, um, and get them actually involved in the process, potentially as a collective. Yeah, because I haven't really talked to you about it, but I mean, some of the highway stuff in roads, just quick summary. Chapter uh, Highway receives 168,000 from Chapter 90 funds. If you were to repair our roads back in 2019, it was like six million. If you were to repair them all, the lifespan used to be 25 years, I think, on roads. Now it's down to 10 years. Mm -hmm. And if you if you if you look at the materials and everything else of what it would cost today, I figure nine. Call it ten million. I was going to say one hundred sixty-eight thousand. You know, to chip away at ten million is going to take you fifty-nine years. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> and that is not the ten-year turnaround. Right. right. <laughs> so. Um, so yeah, I mean, 
obviously we want grants, but we're going to have to figure out a plan, whether it's monetary or something, because things are going to get bad, and I think all the other towns are in the same boat, which means we're all chipping at the same grant money. Yeah, we're all trying to we're all trying to bring home the same right. the same rewards, and some of it is also the how you how you prove it out too. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons I think why we're going after Kimball Street because like let's complete that in, internal portion of the village yeah. where we've already proven that it's it's income eligible right. fundamentally, right. and we're uh, eligible for that money. So, so under number two, we've already bought the fire engine. Yep. That's included in the borrowing, so I'm not sure how you're going to break out your fire truck to uh, police station ratio because it's all lumped together. But I'll I leave think the math to other people. Well, so, yeah, so, 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 the, so the easy way to me, the easy way to do it, since we did lump it all in together and it's all it's all in the same note for the same period, you just list. Uh, you just list it as as municipal municipal borrowing long term, mm -hmm. and list that and the sawmill dam loan for the for the two different things, and, and just reflect it that way okay. fundamentally. Since those projects were recommended at the time they were recommended, instead we can just put that down. I'm assuming the Felton property either is a bill is the 18 common street it is yep okay so that we're hoping to pay off this year so did you put this together or was no, this put sir, this was put together well prior to my existence this yeah this was put together actually by um a committee with uh, uh kermit uh peter o'connell myself al kathleen hosterman um marie yeah i think there's a there's a document, the planning document. Yeah, I don't know who has it. But yeah, I still have a copy of the text. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, there, there is a, but I mean, I don't want to get up to speed, but it's like three years old, I guess. Yeah. 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 Um, and then the the citizen committee came to us and said we don't need a senior se center yeah. yet, yeah, right? Nice. So they so they actually said you know hey we, we want to work on our programs first and then decide if we need a, a, a house for it. Um, there was a, a stabilization fund that was that was mostly for vehicles new and used that I think we are continuing to, to periodically sock mm -hmm. some amount of funding away in. The QULA um, North Pond treatment, that's done. That's done, right. Money's put aside and yep. uh, computers. Telephones, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. The, the computer software, all of that was done. It's all been upgraded. Yep. The telephone system's been upgraded at half the projected cost, actually less than half the projected cost. Right. Um, we installed the remaining snow cleats. That was done. Right, the boiler was done. Or the boiler and circulating pumps, I believe, is yep, done. Yeah, those are done. Right. The phone's done, computers are done, that's done. Um, Great room is still needs to get done. Yeah, we're still trying to find somebody to give us a, a estimate on the repairs. 50,000 seems low. <laughs> so, so that we can go try and get grants, but without a bid, we don't, we don't have, without a, an estimate, we don't you have been able much to, money to You ask. haven't been mm -hmm. able to get anybody to give you an estimate? Nope. Well, we've asked several people now, and no one's ever come back. Wow. They come in and they go, wow, this is a great room. <laughs> Thanks. What do you, can you fix it? <laughs> and what would it cost? A lot. Yeah, we'll have to come back and do that. <laughs> and they and wait. Here. Pretty, 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 pretty. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right, so then uh, well, the, uh, I don't know if this lift is actually ever going to come together. We, I, I'm going to actually reach out to the contractor. We finally found somebody who would do it. And then they were having issues getting the engineering and then getting, uh, because it needs to be a commercial lift. It can't be like a home lift. Right. And they're having difficulty finding a vendor that can actually Make the lift of the engineer. Room. So I don't. I don't. Peter Martel anyway. did say he did carry a lot of people. So. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, All right. So. The police cruisers are on a rotating schedule, I believe. I'm not sure. I haven't been here long enough to see that actually happen. 
So we fight this fight every year, fundamentally. That's why we put it on the plan for being like most years getting one. With like, it's basically four years in a row and then one off. Um, I think that's mostly what we've been doing. Um, I don't know if the police got their copy. Yeah. They, they, they did. did. Yep. Okay, so that's all. Um, I don't know about the fire repair. We've been, it's an ongoing thing with purchasing protective clothing, uh, breathing air compressor apparatus. I think engine two is the one we just retired. Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah. And then station windows and doors he had been asking for. Well, we get the money for the doors. That's right. Although we haven't purchased them yet, we do have, the bids were stale and they, they have exceeded their, um, they're way past their expiration and costs have gone up so much since. Is there they, garage doors? Yes. They have an, <laughs> no, they have an Yeah, boats are only good for so many months. Oh, oh I thought you meant the doors were only good for oh, so long. No, 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 no. <laughs> The, the quotes are only good for so long, so we have to go back out to bid right. on, on them again. Okay. And, and the quotes came in, they were not apples to apples. Yeah. When I was reading them, um, they, some of them weren't going to get rid of the old doors. We had to have them removed and provide all the electrical work. They were basically going to drop doors off. Others were installation and removal was included. and. <laughs> And no electrical, and then there was the uh, then the third one had all the bells and whistles, but we didn't have enough money for that one, and it was stale anyway. So we need to start that process over. Again. Okay. Um, all right. So we did get the replacement generator. Yeah. So. Oh, and you did get the generator. I believe so, yeah. yeah. When we talk about it, you said we got 6,000 expenditures for just the wiring. Correct. Okay. That's all that's been paid out so far. Yes. But I believe the generator it's is contracted it's, it's, for. It's contracted for. So. And we've been in touch, speaking of generators, have we been in touch with the Town Hall Improvement Committee about getting a quote for at least wiring up the Town Hall to receive a generator, if need be? No, nope, I haven't talked to them about that. Um, okay. You, just I would think you a, could wire up off of, this just, is a big one, just, the one out yeah, here, right? Just putting in the, the right junction box so that you can bring power in for right, the generator. Right, yeah. The key is to have the switch, basically. Yeah, yeah. It costs like $1,500, $2,000. Yeah. Well, now they're probably $3,000, but. Yeah, but that generator should be used to power this too, yeah. Back. The one to the fire station? Yeah. No. Well, no. So, so, you so you, you'd have to, we'd have to do very ex extensive, like, plumbing and wiring in order to do it properly. Is there not a conduit between the two? No, oh. there's not. So, um, but yeah, um, one of the things we were talking about was including, yes. Sorry, I'm going to go all around the subject of the town hall. There's a fire alarm system for anywhere on the horizon for the town hall, and this place could go up like much without. And there is no fire. I, I was shocked to hear there's no fire alarm system in this building. There's the town hall and improvement committee looked at it. It's not economically feasible, really. But for us, it could be a matter of lives. So. I also just noticed there's no fire alarm um, suppression. No. No, there's no, there's fire, no suppression. fire suppression. There's no fire anything in this building. Yeah. That's brick on the outside. <laughs> turns it into an oven. <laughs> but that, this is the conversation to have around right. the capital planning, though, right? right? Is that if you're going to do those type of improvements, mm -hmm. then you need to be budgeting. Because didn't the old town hall burn down? It certainly oh. did. <laughs> and history may not repeat itself, but it does rhyme. Right. So. Um, so th there was some money that was assumed would be required for the for the Felton property, um, 
we haven't necessarily budgeted for any of that, and the library has library and historical commission hasn't necessarily asked. They haven't. They haven't asked, but I know that there's some discussion about parking between the two. Yeah. Um, that that's something that we can, that's one of the things Brenda, that we can, uh, hopefully Brenda will bring. Bring to the department, to head, department meeting. head meeting. Yeah. Right, exactly. Um, Has there been subject issues been resolved? And what? The subject issues in the library. I wasn't aware there were any subject issues with the library. There was a, at one point where they were trying to budget for a, 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 a new or enlarged septic system oh. that was one of the reasons to get the felt property is that you now have enough property that if you need to redo the septic system you can so oh, that's interesting yeah that, was, that wasn't a bad, bad move then. no there was good reasons there were there was a lot of potential good reasons for doing that if you're thinking more than 30 days in advance so um yeah, you've got like twenty five thousand dollars a year for them. Yeah. Uh, Originally planned for that, yeah. Um, if needed. Uh, and then Yeah, so I think what we do is we I think the rest of this we take it back to the department heads and probably send them out the old one if you would and just say, Hey, take a look at your we know a is lot this of this the stuff old has been one? checked off. This is the old one. Okay. All right. Do you have it in the Excel okay. format? No, I don't know. Karen, did you get the pipe? I have it in my computer. Is it in Excel yeah, yes, or is it, it like it's this? In, it's in Excel. It's not like this, but it's in Excel. Oh, yeah. All right. So, so we can send that out. Send it out. Department heads. Send it out to department heads. Yeah. Say, hey, come come prepared to talk at the February meeting regarding, you know, we and let them know. We, we know a bunch of this stuff has been done. We know a bunch of this stuff may be still sitting out there. Mm. Did Tim come for a particular reason? Actually, he's definitely on the agenda that I know of. Okay. Oops, I'm sorry. I keep hitting the microphone with my paper. Is that making a lot of noise? I apologize okay. for that. Um, my mic's off anyway. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think that's the I think that's the approach to take with regards to this until we get a committee. So, yeah, no, I think that's good. You know, and get get them all invested in it. Mm -hmm. And I think actually one of the I only brought it up because I had asked Kelly about it, and yep. she said nothing has really been done with it in a few years. And I was like, well, we should probably and, and bring that back. And, and here's <laughs> the thing: it, historically, it's almost been. I hate to put it this way, it's almost been like inflicted on from the outside and the department, in, it, it turned into, I think a lot of the reason why that, that committee failed mm -hmm. was a, a lack of productive and enthusiastic engagement from the department heads. So maybe if they own at least yeah. putting the proposal together and then it's more of a review process, there'll be more potential for getting it and maintaining it and making it part of their process. So, and then having the capital improvement mm -hmm. committee be more of a review step than a, I'm having to skull drag people in to get right. the information step. So. Um, is it, excuse me, I'm sorry. There's a proposed project, South Palm Beach, funding sought through state budget earmark 25,000. Does anybody know what that's for? Um, I think we were trying to get them to help us put sand back where the beach is and make it more uh, handicap accessible. There's a walkway there that's uh, got handicap accessibility issues. Can I give you a kiss now? Later. <laughs> <laughs> later. The, the, um, you know, I talked to Andy a couple of times and she was like, go around in a circle and uh, I call in some of the state wildlife and it's just, I, I, I think Clarence before said it was about 35,000 to do, you know. It's probably 50 level. now, yeah. So I'm sort of in a roadblock. And, but I haven't uh, alerted QQLA what we're trying to do. And then, you know, I figured if we get a disabled veteran and my wife and a few other people who start doing some social media, then maybe we'll get the state to push a little bit. So. Yeah, because every year they ask us for earmarks. Yeah, and so, but so one of the one of but the it, but what helps is if we have a shovel ready with this is that contract. we don't own the land. Yeah, how do we? And and in our contract, we can't change anything on the beach. We can't do anything with it. We have to make sure it's exactly the way it is. 
Do we not uh, want well, it? In the contract, in the it allows maintenance. We can re-nourish the beach. That's in the contract. But re-nourish and make handicap accessible might be two different definitions. No, that that's that's a totally different subject. Exactly. So that's that's where our hiccup is. If we, it's different if we're going to replace the sand and make it to what it should be, as opposed to somehow making it so that handicap accessibility is feasible there. We have a glitch in that the state is the one that would need to approve the project and the, and the state, so they won't earmark money for Brookfield for a state project. Right. And so that's where we're, we're catching in kind of like a circular. We need some political yeah. Can I get a quick Can I get a quick history lesson? Why don't we have that? At what point did that transfer over to the state? So and what does it take beach, to get it the back? The beach was owned by Ocom. All of that land, all the way from the farm, all the way to the beach was Ocom. Mm -hmm. uh, it got divided up, and unfortunately, that section went to the went to the state along with the state fish and wildlife property. So the state fish and wildlife owns the beach and they sign an annual agreement with the town that we can run the beach and the, the agreement is renewed every year. So we, there are a number of things in the agreement that we do, we don't do. Um, our conservation commission, when we try to put sand down there and said, no, you can't do that. Well, it's in the agreement. You can do that. Uh, but they got hung up with our own conservation commission. Yeah, like two years. years. Well, like Susan, I don't know. Well, like two years. Yeah. So you're right. The, the other thing is that the beach is actually named. I mean, the beach itself is named for a handicapped veteran. <laughs> well, that's, that's <laughs> an interesting and, and I believe the state when they rebuilt the boat ramp, did the parking area at the beach and the handicap ramp, which is not effective. So now, whether you could get them to fix their error that was twelve years. So how do we that, you know, not that. mistakes? So how do we reclaim this land? <laughs> We can't. We, don't. we Why? never owned it in the first place. It was or, or how, how can we purchase it or take uh, it? So yeah, here's the state proposal give that I put back. forward uh, about two years ago. We own the parking lot over at the canoe launch. I said, Trade give it. them that, we'll take the beach. And Ann Gobi said, you can't do that. Why? Like, she didn't think Fish and Wildlife would go for it. She didn't think, but it could be asked. <laughs> right, mean, right. It was a way of getting yeah. the beach under right. I mean, we don't need to go through this today, but I'd like to have another. Um, I've given <laughs> Jeff all of the documentation for the beach yeah. for the last 10 years. So I'm also chairman of the South Park Beach yeah. Committee, which was just formed in the last year. So we have five members who are actively pushing to get you know, the stuff. Way it should be. Yeah. The, the last agreement actually, the last agreement with the state actually has a clause in it that we can charge for the use of the beach. Mm -hmm. Which could then go into revolving, right. then that which could yeah. go into a revolving fund to start the, to. The other open. problem is that it's state owned, licensed to the town, so it can't be a town beach. In other words, you can't. You can't restrict use. Right. right, no. Right. So just to answer your other question, the reason why the, the handicapped accessible sort of come to the fore in the last couple of years is because the town, the state with its improving the ramp and the, the, the boat ramp and all the other stuff, they put this floating dock to act. Right. ADA compliant floating handicapped that, that precludes anyone from going down the ramp and just going into the shallow water and getting to the beach, which handicapped or maybe disabled people could do in the, in the past. Mm -hmm. So my wife used to get down, and now with, the, with that dock there, you gotta go into the deep water, and it's, it's not right. Well, that might, not be, that might be an out. I mean, that is, that is not on the beach property. 
that is on the voter access property. You could maybe go to them and ask them to put a ramp off of that to the beach. That might be a lower cost thing, but, but again, it's, it's... Well, it's their property, they would do it. Right, right, but I, I'm just saying is that it, it's, just having gone through it a little bit, it's just the political situation is a little bit daunting because I, I from everything I've seen, again, this is my personal opinion, this fishing game people, they would prefer the thing just to put riff rock there and just do fishing year round rather than having a reach. So that sort of pressure that Push that's back, a push me pull you that's going on there. So I, it sounds like though I, I I like the idea of approaching the state about a project to to be able to get to the beach from that dock in a safe manner for handicapped folks to make it. The accessible. only problem is that the two handicapped faces are up at the beach and they would have to walk all the way down from those two parking spaces all the way down to the boat ramp would go down the boat ramp to get to the ramp to get all the way back to the beach. Mm. I mean, it could it could provide somebody access. You could somebody could drive somebody down there and drop them off. They could at least get there. Yeah. yeah. Right now, the handicap parking at the beach, you can't get there from here. Yeah. The two ramps, the, the one ramp that is semi, it's not even paved, is washed out. And the other ramp is not, I mean, a walkway is not really a walkway. So. Okay. Right, but, but if any, any push would be great. I've mean, talked to all of you about it. So anything that you can do that the push, I think, is it's a win win situation because, you know, handicapped people should be able to use the beach. Right? Yeah. Todd Atlantic from Todd right. Atlantic is the regional director, and he's worked with Tom on a number of different occasions. He knows Brookfield well. He's the one that issues the annual agreement. And Terry Smith uh, is so. There's a, the boat ramp is provided under the voter access kind of subcommittee of Fish and Wildlife. So, like most state agencies, you have to go through a number of hurdles. Before, right? Yeah, got it. Okay. Right. And so I, I volunteered and volunteered to try to start that process by my boss. So uh, I will make it a to keep reporting back uh, Fair enough. to do that. All right. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes of I make January? a motion to approve the select board minutes for July 11th, 2017, January 1st, 2023. Two sets, one 1123. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. We've got minutes and reports from other um, Departments. Sorry, it's just my notes. Um, we've got firefighter Donna Lafleur, 30 years. My goodness, and she has like 40 some odd with the EMT, correct? Yeah. Um, firefighter Charles Eggert. Edget. Edget. Um, helps put my glasses on. Uh, 21 years, and then Damon Sargent, one year, uh, and then Captain David Martell, 33 years, and firefighter Kayla Laporte, one year. Dave doesn't even look 33. Oh, sort of. <laughs> We have good water in the town. We do have. Well, we did, we did until we started chlorinating it. <laughs> anyway, um, let's see here. Uh, they did provide uh, the eight calls uh, for for the period, and then eight calls. It looks like for November. And then 13 calls in December. Apparently we set things on fire 
during the holidays. Oh, Christmas trees, lights, candles. Right, and then we also have minutes from the uh, um, joint meeting with the Board of Health. Yep. All right. I believe that is it. All of this is can I get a motion to Mo adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. All right, second. All in favor, aye. Oh. <laughs> is it rele relevant to the... It's relevant to the budget. Um... You, we've adjourned. Oh, we've we've, we've, we've adjourned. technically adjourned. Make the copies in the end, though. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. Works. There we go. That we works. Discuss it, but yeah. <laughs> All in favor, aye. All in favor, aye. Thank you.